Now every minus is total minus one minus. Total is this. One minus is this. It will take always. Okay, so this is the fluid mechanics subject, and its course code is MEC402. So this is the core structure. So this subject has a uh, only theory classes. So there is no practical for this subject. So theory classes will be three to four in a week. Okay, so there is no practical in the new syllabus. So this part, it is. shifted to the sixth semester that is a turbo machinery subject okay so practicals have been removed then internal assessment for this course so two compulsory class test each will carry 20 marks okay so unit test 1 it will be for 20 marks okay so this is on the approximately 40% of your syllabus and unit test 2 it is 20 marks okay so it is up to 80% syllabus okay and the passing out of 20 so you should get 40% marks okay so 8 marks is the passing then end semester theory exam so this is for the 80 marks okay so weightage for module as per the number of teaching hours so total theory weightage this is 100 marks so it is 80 Theory marks that is the theory exam final, and twenty marks from the unit test. Okay, so unit test will be the average of two tests. So therefore, subject is for hundred marks. So this is the overall core structure. Okay, so what are the course objectives? So the first objective. to study the fluid static and the fluid dynamics okay so the fluid mechanics is mainly classified into two parts one is a static where the fluid is stationary okay and then we will deal with the forces acting on the fluid or on the other object which is in contact with that fluid okay so this is called as a fluid static and fluid dynamics means when the fluid is in motion then we will do the force analysis and the motion analysis okay so this is called as a fluid dynamics second objective is to acquaint with dimensional analysis of thermal and the fluid system okay so this is the mathematical analysis for the thermal and fluid system third is to familiarize with the application of mass momentum and the energy equation in the fluid flow so this is related with the fluid dynamics part fourth objective is to study the various flow measurement techniques so there are various flow measurement devices okay so in that we have the venturi meter then we have the orifice meter then we have pitot tube okay so these are various flow measurement and the pressure measurement techniques so we will study this and the fifth objective is to familiarize with the dynamics of fluid flow and the governing non dimensional parameters okay so these are the course objectives then what are the course outcomes okay so course outcome means when you will study this subject then at the end what is expected from the student okay so the first course outcome is you should able to define the properties of the fluids then classify the fluids and evaluate the hydrostatic forces on the various surfaces okay so the first course outcome it is related with the module 1 okay second outcome is you should be able to illustrate understanding of dimensional analysis of thermal and the fluid system then third is differentiate velocity potential function stream function and solve for velocity and acceleration of a fluid at a given location in a fluid flow okay fourth is formulate and solve the equations of the control volume for the fluid flow system 
and apply the Bernoulli's equation to various flow measuring devices. Okay, so this is again related with the fluid dynamics. Fifth outcome is to calculate the pressure drop in laminar and the turbulent flow, evaluate the major and minor losses in the pipes. Okay, so we will calculate the pressure drop across the fluid flow that is uh, in the pipelines. And the six is calculate the resistance to the flow for incompressible fluids through closed conduits and over the surfaces. Okay, so these are six outcomes that is expected from the students. Okay, so what are the reference books for this subject? So the first book is Fluid Mechanics by the Senjal and the Simbala, which is a Tata Magra Hill publication. Okay, so this is available in our college library. Second book is Fluid Mechanics by R.K. Bansal. So this is also available in the college library. Next is Fluid Mechanics by Munson and Young. So this is the name of the scientist and its publication is it's a Wiley and Sons publication. Okay, so you can refer any of these three books. Okay. Okay, so now we will see the syllabus. So for this subject, you have total six modules. So out of that module one, so this is for the fluid static. Okay. So in the section 1.1, we will study the basic concepts regarding the fluid. So in that, we will study the significance of fluid mechanics, then physical properties of the fluid, Newton's law of viscosity, and the types of fluids. Okay, so in that we have Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. Then in the second section 1.2, which is a fluid static, where the fluid will be stationary. Okay. And then we will calculate the forces by the fluid on the object which are in contact. Okay, so this can be the concrete wall in case of the hydro dam. Okay. So in that we will study the Pascal law hydrostatic law hydrostatic force on the submerged surfaces so in that we will study if the surface is vertical surface is inclined and if the surface is curved surface okay then archimedes principle and the buoyancy so this is your module one in the module two so this is the fluid kinematics so first section in the module 2 which is the 2.1 is a fluid kinematics so in that classification of fluid flow then streamline path line streak line so these are the definitions okay or the motions of the fluid then acceleration of the fluid particle so we will study the equation for the acceleration then differential equation for the continuity okay so the continuity equation it will describe the fluid flow Okay, so this is the mathematical modeling of the flow. Then equation for rotational flow, vertices, then equation for stream function, potential function, and concept of circulation. Okay, so these are all mathematical modeling for various fluid flow. In the section 2.2, it is the dimensional analysis. So introduction to dimensional analysis of thermal and fluid system. Then methods of dimensional analysis in that we have Buckingham Pi theorem, then Rayleigh's method. Okay, so we only have the derivation. There will not be any numerical on this part. Okay, so this is your module two. Module three, it is about the fluid dynamics. Okay, so dynamics means the motion analysis by considering the forces. Okay, so in that we will study the concept of control volume and control surface then we will study the Reynolds transport theorem so this is the most important theorem in the fluid dynamics it is called as rtt okay we have the derivation for Reynolds transport theorem after that we will calculate the forces on the when fluid is in motion so we have the euler's equation in cartesian coordinate okay after that we will study the bernoulli's equation okay 
then we have the application of bernoulli's equation so these are the flow measurement devices orifice meter venturi meter rotameter and the retort tube okay so we will apply the bernoulli's equation to get the equation for this instruments okay so actually we are designing this instrument next is momentum of the fluid motion so we will use the impulse momentum relationship for the fluid particle and its application to determine the thrust in the pipe that means when we have the bend in the pipes okay and fluid is flowing through this bend then fluid will apply some forces okay on this pipe okay so we will calculate this forces x component and the y component of forces so that we will study in this last point so this is your module 3 in the module 4 we will see the laminar viscous flow okay so in that we will study the reynolds number and what is the significance of reynolds number and how we can differentiate the laminar flow turbulent flow and the transient flow with the help of reynolds number okay then we will study the navier stokes equation for the motion okay its relationship between shear stress and pressure gradient in the laminar flow then laminar flow between the parallel plates and laminar flow in the circular pipe okay in the module 5 we have the flow through the pipes okay so in that we have the reynolds experiments then the losses in the pipes so we have the head loss calculation okay so losses due to friction then losses due to bend so these are called as a major and the minor losses okay then hydraulic gradient energy gradient line then the flow through pipes in series and pipes in parallel and concept of equivalent pipe okay so this is your module for you the module 6 we will study the hydrodynamic boundary layer okay so concept of boundary layer so concept of formation of boundary layer boundary layer parameters then boundary layer along thin plate and in pipe and there is one theory which is a prandtl mixing length theory okay then we have the separation of the boundary layer and the method to control that separation then flow around the submerged objects and after that last is concept of drag and lift okay so in the drag and lift we will study the science behind the aeroplane okay so how the aeroplane flies in the air so it depends on this concept that is concept of drag and lift okay so in that we will study the streamline objects bluff objects or the bluff bodies and drag and lift on the aerofoil okay so these are the syllabus for all the modules module 1 to module 6 okay so today we will start with the module 1 so in the module 1 this is the content of the module 1 we have the introduction to fluid mechanics some basic definitions and the application okay then we have the properties of the fluids so properties are nothing but the characteristics of the fluids then classification of the fluids okay so in the classification we have the newtonian fluid and the non newtonian fluid then concept of continuum okay then we have the fluid static where the fluid will be stationary and we will calculate the forces so in that we will study the pascal law 
then basic hydrostatic equation then forces on the sub surfaces due to hydrostatic pressure then buoyancy and the archimedes principle okay so this is your overall content for the module 1 okay so we will see the classification of engineering mechanics okay so fluid mechanics it is the part of engineering mechanics so you must have studied the mechanics subject in your first year so this is complete classification of the mechanics subject so mechanics is mainly divided as a solid mechanics and second is the fluid mechanics okay so solid mechanics it will deal with the solid objects okay so in the solid mechanics we have two separate branches one is a rigid body mechanics and second is the mechanics of deformable bodies so the first year subject that is a mechanics is only the rigid body mechanics we assume the body is perfectly rigid there is no deformation in the second year that is your semester 3 you learn the subject strength of material okay so strength of material this subject it is nothing but mechanics of deformable bodies that means when you apply the force there will be some deformation and it will give rise to stress and strain okay so the strength of material subject is nothing but mechanics of deformable bodies and this subject it is again classified as theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity so you must have studied this subject in the semester 3 this second branch of the engineer mechanics is a fluid mechanics which only deals with the fluids okay so fluid mechanics is classified as a fluid static that is our first module okay and the fluid dynamics so in the fluid dynamics we have fluid kinematics and the fluid kinetics or we simply call this as a fluid dynamics okay so this is complete classification of the engineer mechanics subject okay so what is fluid mechanics what is the definition so it is the science that deals with the behavior of the fluid at rest or fluid in motion and their interaction with the solids and other fluids in the contact okay so this study this is called as a fluid mechanics that means we will study the fluids at rest fluid in motion and the interaction with the other solids which are in contact with the fluid okay so simply you can assume so here the diagram is shown the fluid is flowing through the pipe okay so when the fluid flows through the pipe or it flows across this bend okay so fluid will be in motion so it will carry some momentum okay so the fluid particles so they will have some mass okay and the velocity so they will carry the momentum okay so when they will strike or get collided on the wall of this pipe they will apply the forces okay so this calculation that is calculation of forces okay so for that we should study the fluid mechanics subject okay also the fluid it will be pressurized fluid okay so the pressure so you can see here so there is one vertical pipe connected with this original pipeline okay so due to pressure the fluid it will rise to a particular height okay suppose this height is h so this rise of fluid in this tube it is due, due to the fluid is pressurized okay so all these parameters that is a pressure calculation velocity calculation then forces on the pipe okay or forces on the bend so all these calculations we will do with the help of the fluid mechanics subject so fluid mechanics is classified as a fluid static and the fluid dynamics okay now there is a separate classification which is application based classification okay so what are the application 
so first application is hydrodynamics okay so hydrodynamics it is the branch of fluid mechanics where the study of motion of fluid that can be assumed to be incompressible okay so where we will do the study on the fluids where the fluids are incompressible we cannot compress the fluid okay so here example is water oil then gasoline that is a petrol okay so this branch is called as a hydrodynamics second is the hydraulic okay so hydraulic is so it is the sub category of the hydrodynamics that is the incompressible fluids which deals with the incompressible liquids that flows through the pipes and through the open channel okay so hydraulic for example is oil cylinder of earth movers that is your jcb then hydraulic jack okay so design of such devices okay so we should study the hydraulic okay so hydraulic is nothing but the pressure calculation on the fluids so you can see here this is the jcb arm okay so these are the hydraulic cylinders of the jcbs so this cylinders they are operated with the high pressure fluid so these are the pressure lines okay so this pressure lines they provide the pressurized fluid and then you can see the forward and the reverse motion of this hydraulic cylinders okay second is the hydraulic jack so with the help of hydraulic jack so this is the lever of that hydraulic jack so we can create we can amplify the small force into a very large amount of force okay so with the help of this force we can lift the vehicle okay so here the principle is we will use the pascal law okay so this is again a part of hydraulic then the hydraulic press okay so hydraulic press they are used in the industry okay so for the punching operation for blanking operation okay or for the forming operation so this hydraulic press they are also based on the pascal laws okay next branch it is the gas dynamics okay so gas dynamics it deals with the flow of fluids that undergoes the significant change in the density okay so you can see here the example for the spacecraft okay so when spacecraft enters from the space into the earth atmosphere then at the entry you can see the gases so it will create the huge temperature when the spacecraft enter into the earth atmosphere okay and because of the temperature there will be expansion of the gases okay around the spacecraft so the study of the fluid that undergoes a significant change in the density so because of the temperature there will be change in the density of the fluid around this spacecraft so in the example we have the flow through the nozzles okay and flow over the spacecraft so this is the separate branch which is a gas dynamics next is the aerodynamics okay so aerodynamics means it deals with the flow of gases that is air over the bodies such as automobiles that is cars then spacecrafts airplane buildings okay so we will study the flow at very high speed okay on the spacecraft airplane buildings okay and from this we will determine the drag force and the lift force okay so here you can see so actually this is the gas chamber okay so in the gas chamber we will study how the air will pass over this car so this is the flow of air on the car so to design very high speed cars 
we need to design the aerodynamic shape okay so aerodynamic shape means what it will minimize the resistance to air okay and air it can smoothly pass over the car so that will give the high speed okay so now we will see what is meaning of fluid okay so what is the definition of fluid so fluid is a substance which exists exit in liquid and the gas phase so it is referred as a fluid so a substance that deform continuously under the application of the shear force or the shear stress it is called as a fluid okay so this is more technical definition the substance that continuously deform under the application of shear force or shear stress so in the solid when shear stress is applied it deforms by certain amount and then it stops by offering the shear stress whereas fluid deforms continuously okay so this is the definition of fluid so fluid can be a gas or it can be liquid okay so here you can see the example of the fluid so this is the water okay and second example is the gas so here you can see the aerodynamic so this is the tennis ball okay and these are the flow lines so actually these are called as a stream lines so here the gas is flowing around this tennis ball okay so we will understand the fluid motion motion with the help of the deformation okay so i have taken here one solid which is one cube okay and on this cube on the top surface suppose the bottom surface we have fix so this surface it cannot move it is fix and we are applying the force a on the top surface okay so what will happen so it will undergo some deformation like this okay so this deformation it will create the shear stress in the layers of that solid so we can consider the solid it is composed of the various layers like this okay so each layer in the solid will try to slide over the other layer okay and therefore they will give rise to a shear stress okay so shear stress it is developed so suppose if i consider very small layer like this okay so actually we are applying the force on the top plate okay consider this top plate okay the bottom plate which is in contact with this plate or with this layer will try to offer the opposite force that is the resistance okay so this force will be ha will have the same magnitude so this will give rise to the stress okay in this layers so this stress is nothing but the tau this is the shear stress so you have already studied this in the uh, strength of material okay shear stress so shear stress is equal to the resisting force that is the shear force upon the shear area okay 
so shear area means you should consider this total area that is a rectangle for this case okay okay so this is just for the solid okay now compare this deformation okay so this is the separation of the layers okay so actually if you observe microscopically then each layer will try to slide over the other layer okay so bottom layer it will be fixed and subsequent la layers will try to move over the other layer now just consider the liquid okay or the fluid so i have considered the atomic structure okay so that you can understand the motion so here we have the different layers okay and this is the fixed layer or you can consider this is the pipe wall or you can consider the container like this okay so we have the container in the container we have the liquid like this okay so the container in the container the atoms or the molecules of the fluid which are in contact with the wall or the bottom surface we will assume they are fixed okay they cannot move so when we apply the force on the top layer so just imagine there is one object which is floating on the top layer okay so consider just the metal piece which is floating on the top layer and we are applying the force f on this metal piece okay so because of this force the molecules which are in contact with this plate they will receive some velocity okay so you can see the motion okay so you can see the motion is started okay so gradually this motion it will get transmitted to the adjacent layer okay so topmost layer that means this layer they will have the same velocity of this plate okay and this velocity will reduce gradually up to the bottom plate so the bottom layer they will have theoretically zero velocity okay and this plate it is having the maximum velocity so this velocity get transmitted to the first layer so this is having the v velocity so you can see the motion so as long as we are applying the force f the fluid it will continuously deform so this is the basic difference in the solids and the fluids in case of solid solid will deform to certain angle okay and up after that they will stop deforming okay so they will offer the huge shear resistance but fluid will not offer such resistance so they will continuously deform okay and then you can see the fluid motion so okay, observe this animation so this is the fluid motion okay so this fluid motion we can understand with the help of the newton's law of viscosity so newton's law of viscosity it will give the mathematical equation for the force that is the shear stress and the fluid deformation okay so consider a fluid molecule or the fluid particle which is at position n okay when we are applying the force f the fluid particle which was originally at point a n it has traveled
ओके सो सपोज सो इनिशियली वी हैव दी फ्लूड पार्टिकल सो हियर दिस इज द फ्लूड ओके एंड वी हैव वन स्टेशनरी प्लेट सो दिस इज द फिक्स प्लेट ओके एंड दिस इज द मूविंग प्लेट सो जस्ट इमेजिन वी हैव ए लार्ज कंटेनर इन द कंटेनर वी हैव द लिक्विड लाइक दिस ओके एंड देर इज वन मेटल प्लेट ओके and on the metal plate we are applying some force f okay and there is one small particle which is in contact with this metal plate so originally this particle is at position n so this is the position shown when we apply the force n it will travel by certain distance with the plate and it will occupy a new position n dash okay so with respect to this stationary point okay you can form the triangle and this angular deformation this is nothing but the theta okay so the actually this theta it will give the strain value so this is the shear strain okay so this shear strain so we can assume this theta to be very small so we will write this as a d theta okay so d theta this is equal to so actually this is a tan theta we should write this as a tan theta okay so tan d theta so for very small angle tan theta is equal to theta so this is equal to d theta and that is equal to so we can assume this to be a very small length as a da okay and this separation so this is the l so it is given okay so this is a d theta is equal to da upon l okay now this da this is the displacement okay from point n to n dash suppose when we apply the force f this plate that is this plate it is moving with the constant velocity v okay so velocity is equal to distance upon time so velocity v of this plate suppose it is moving with the velocity v so this is equal to distance upon time so distance upon time so distance is nothing but da for this molecule okay and we will consider the very small time dt okay so from this we can write da this is equal to v into dt okay so we can write here da is v dt upon l okay so from this we will get d theta upon dt this is equal to v upon l okay so this is called as a rate of deformation okay so this d theta upon dt upon dt this is called as a rate of shear strain okay or this is called as a rate of deformation okay now this rate of deformation is equal to the v upon l okay now what is v upon l so try to understand with this velocity triangle okay so this triangle basically it represent the variation of velocity from the fixed plate up to the moving plate so moving plate it is having the maximum velocity which is the v okay so this is the maximum velocity the particles of the fluid which are in contact with the bottom plate will have theoretically zero velocity 
okay they will not move at all and gradually the velocity will increase in the subsequent layers okay so suppose if you are interested in the velocity of a layer suppose this is the layer okay it is at distance y with respect to the fixed plate so how to get the velocity so we can consider so this is the l distance okay so at distance l we have the velocity capital v which is the maximum velocity okay so at distance y we will assume the velocity to be uy okay so this velocity we can assume as a uy velocity so we can calculate this velocity as just take the ratio y upon l is equal to uy upon v okay so uy this is equal to v upon l into y okay so if you differentiate this equation then you will get du upon dy just differentiate with respect to y this is equal to v upon l okay so what is du upon dy so du upon dy it represent the velocity variation across the height so you can consider this is a y direction and u is the horizontal velocity okay so as you move upward the velocity will increase okay so this is the equation that is nothing but velocity gradient okay now the newton's law of viscosity it gives the relation the shear stress in the layer okay is directly proportional to the rate of shear deformation okay so what is the rate of shear deformation so we have that equation it is a d theta upon dt okay and from this we can write tau is directly proportional to as we know d theta upon dt is nothing but v upon l okay and this v upon l just we have written du upon dy is nothing but the v upon l this is called as a velocity gradient so shear stress is directly proportional to velocity gradient du by dy okay so this is your basic equation the shear stress in the fluid layer is directly proportional to the rate of shear deformation okay now this proportionality we can convert into equality by adding one constant so tau is equal to mu into du upon d1 okay so this is the equation for newton's law of viscosity so this constant this is called as a viscosity constant okay so actually this is called as a dynamic viscosity okay so this is the coefficient of viscosity which is a mu so this is coefficient of viscosity okay so this is the newton's law of viscosity that is a shear stress we can give by this equation mu into du by dy and its unit will be newton per meter square okay and from this we can formulate the equation for mu which is the dynamic viscosity this is equal to tau upon rate of deformation du by dy okay or the velocity gradient okay so this equation it will be so this is newton per meter square upon du by dy so du means velocity so it is meter per second upon dy is distance so it is a meter okay so finally you will get newton upon meter square upon 1 upon second so sorry 1 upon second so it is newton second per meter square so this is the si unit for the dynamic viscosity newton second per meter square okay so the liquids or the fluids which follows this law okay tau directly proportional to velocity gradient or tau directly proportional to the rate of shear deformation 
all these fluids we call this as a newtonian fluid okay so we will see in detail the classification okay for this is called as a newtonian fluid and the example is water it is a common example which follows the newton's law of viscosity okay Uh, 